Mate, yeah. Good morning, everyone. Hopefully uh, you can hear me okay at your end. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, on a Saturday morning and thanks to uh, Mitch Marsh for coming along and uh, giving us a little bit of time before the uh, second training session um, of the Sri Lanka tour uh, later this afternoon. <coughs> so as always, guys, if you have a question, raise your hand, microphones and cameras off if you wouldn't mind uh, so we can preserve the uh, bandwidth for all those uh, joining the call. Um, all right, well, we'll, uh, we'll get underway. We'll start off with um, Louis Cameron. Hey, Mitch, um, just hoping you might be able to talk us through your, your recent IPL experience, kind of starting from, um, uh, you know, COVID and an injury at the start and then getting a, a good run at the back end. Uh, yeah, it was obviously um, an, another awesome experience at the IPL. Um, I think after my first couple of weeks there, I started to think that I was cursed in India. Um, but uh, once I got through my initial, um, you know, my injury was very minor. Um, so it was really nothing to worry about at the start. But then, yeah, to play the one game and then get COVID, it was a bit of a shaky start. But, um, yeah, once I got going, it was nice to put a few consistent performances on the board and um, and, and contribute to a few wins for Delhi. Um, yeah, absolutely loved my time there. Uh, I'd spent eight weeks with with Punter and Shane Watson and James Hopes, um, you know, with those guys. And, and Davey Warner it was a... A great experience and the shame we uh, couldn't sneak into the finals. Do you feel like that number three spot, like you, you're really getting a, a good run at it now, Mitch? Like, do you really feel like you've you've gotten your head around it? And also, just want to ask about um, Ricky Ponting as well. What did you pick up from him? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I've loved being at number three. Um, probably been a bit over 12 months now. So, um, I certainly feel like um, you know, that's my position in, in T20 cricket. and. Um, I've loved batting the power play. I've batted a lot with Davey Warner. Um, had some great partnerships with him, and um, it's been really enjoyable. So um, hopefully, I can uh, yeah keep being as consistent as I possibly can at, at number three and um, and stay up there. Um, and as for Ricky, yeah, look, just a um, a great fella. Um, we obviously know everyone knows and everyone speaks about him so much about what he's achieved in the game, but um, probably got the, a real sense of how much he cares for his players and. Um, I guess that's probably what he was like as a captain and as a leader of a team. Um, yeah, just the way he makes you feel. Um, made me feel like I was, you know, um, a really important player for Delhi. And I think as a player, you gain confidence from that when your coach or captain or leader um, instills that sort of confidence in you. So, um, yeah, he, he was unbelievable. And um, it was a shame that our North Melbourne, uh, we couldn't watch North Melbourne get a few wins together, but um, that was about it. The Roos are struggling, mate. Yeah, thanks for that, uh, yeah. Mitch. Andrew McGlashan. Thanks, Cole. Hey, Mitch. Um, just to follow on from what Louis was asking there, really, just to sort of go back a bit further. I mean, 12 months ago, just sort of were getting ready for that Caribbean tour where the chance to bat three emerged for you. How do you reflect on the last 12 months, particularly in your T20 cricket, and how do you feel now as an Australian cricketer compared to maybe 12 months ago? Um. Yeah, it's obviously, oh, it's been a, um, yeah, it's been a pretty crazy 12 months. Um, a lot's happened and um, I've certainly loved, um, you know, playing as much cricket for Australia as I have um, consistently. Um, probably reflecting on the last 12 months, I think as I've got a, got a bit older, gained a bit more experience, um, started to understand what, uh, what works for me when it comes to preparation. Um, and going into, into each game feeling as good as I possibly can. Um, and like I've spoken about, international cricket um, is, is really hard, but um, you've got to believe that you belong here. And I think over the last 12 months, I've really um, gained the belief that my best can match it with anyone in the world. And um, I think that, you know, all the best players in the world have that mentality. Um, and that just, that mentality allows me to go out there and just play freely and, and really focus on my role for the team um, and, and being present um, throughout games, being present throughout my preparation, my lead up to, to every game, to every tour. Um, and uh, that's allowed me to be, to probably have my most consistent 12 months of cricket um, over the last period of time. So um, yeah, it's, uh, that's about it. And, and can I just ask about the bowling as well? You managed to get a few decent spells towards the, back end of the IPL, dependent on the balance of the side you guys go with in these games, you might play an extra, uh, one frontline quick fewer, you might get a few more overs. How do you feel it's coming out with the ball and the role you can play with that part of your game? 
I spoke to uh, Finch yesterday, just asked him if I was going to be taking the first over with the ball. Um, didn't get a great reception, so um, I think I'll be sticking to the middle overs. Uh, but I, I, I've, I mean, like my batting, um, I've gained a lot more confidence in my bowling, my plans. Andrew McDonald's been um, unreal for me in, in that sense and, and given me a lot more confidence in myself to, to bowl at different times. And, and Finch has been the same. Um, he's sort of lent on me with the ball at different times throughout the last 12 months, and that's given me a lot of confidence. Um, so I think as an all-rounder and with the amount of bowling we've got in our team, it's just, it's just preparing to bowl. Um, and then you know, whenever the, the skipper gives you gives you the ball, just making sure you, you try and execute your, your plans. And um, But in the same sentence, you know, it might be a case that I don't actually bowl any balls because we've got so many bowlers here. So, um, yeah, I'll just stay ready and um, and try and contribute when, when needed. Cheers, Mitch. Thanks. Chloe. Thanks, Cole. Hey, Mitch. Um, I guess for the lads like yourself who were in Pakistan and uh, then got to play in the IPL, do you kind of see that as like a perfect lead-in for the conditions you'll you'll likely face in, in Sri Lanka? Uh, yeah, certainly the heat. I was kind of hoping that eight weeks in India would um, acclimatise me for um, Sri Lanka, but yesterday's training session... Um, was bloody tough and uh, and hot and sweaty, um, but yeah, look, I think I just think the IPL in general, um, you know, it's it's such a great tournament. Um, you know, you go there and and your cricket just improves. There's there's so many great cricketers there. Um, those conditions are obviously foreign to us, so learning as much as you can, playing a lot of spin. Um, you know, so you come to tours like this, and um, like you said, I feel really well prepared and. And, um, and hopefully I can uh, contribute to a few wins. Uh, yeah, I guess, like, what are, what are you expecting? If, if the spinners are in it from day one, like, has there been much chat about, you know, tackling the likes of a, a Hasaranga or a Tiksana? Um, well, yeah, we know what we're going to face. We know we're going to, um, I mean, most T20 teams around the world these days play a couple of spinners and certainly in these conditions, I think that'll be the case. So, it's just about having your plans. Um, you know, you're going to probably get eight to maybe ten overs of spin of the out of the twenty overs. So um, it's it's just about having plans for those. And then um, you know, on the day, um, situations of the game change, um, and just being prepared for that. So um, we know that we're going to face a lot of spin. Um, we'll, we'll chat about that over the next few days. And every batsman has different plans to those spinners. Um, it's just about going out there and executing. So. Um, I think our team, where we're at right now, um, you look down our list, um, you know, a couple of years ago, we probably had a, a few weaknesses at spin, but I think everyone's improved so much against playing spin that we've just got so much confidence in ourselves to go out there and take the game on and execute our plans. So, um, you know, I think we're all really up and about for this challenge against Sri Lanka in their conditions. Roy. G'day, Mitch. It's Roy from The Age in Melbourne, mate. Thank you for the time. Um, you, you mentioned about the mental health, the mental side of things and how comfortable you're feeling. Um, how much has your steady role, having a role you sort of know know what you're doing, helped you sort of have the success you've been having? Um, yeah, there's probably no doubt that that has played a role in that. Um, I think batting at three, obviously, um, coming in with one wicket down, um, and generally that's in the power play. So, um, yeah, yeah. I guess you get consistency in, in that. But, um, yeah, I think just getting the, the belief and and and, um, and feeling like I've got a really important role to play in this team um, gives you that belief and, um, yeah, hope that answers your question. <laughs> just to follow from that, um, you said you, how, how three fits with your game and so forth. Could you ever see yourself opening if the need arose or sort of going in when there's no wickets and everything's fresh? Uh, yeah, I think, um, it's, to be honest, it's not really something that I, I think about. Um, and it's just, I just, I know it sounds cliche, but I just, um, I know that I'm going to be batting three and, and I prepare prepare that way. Um, and if, if things change in the future, then so be it. But um, for now, I'm very happy batting number three. Thanks, Mike. Scotty Bailey. Thanks, Cole. Hey, Mitch, I know the, um, the T20s are first up, but it, I guess looking forward to be able to play some one-day cricket for Australia, hopefully, because, you know, obviously there was none during the summer in Australia, then you can get the chance in Pakistan and for World Cup, you know, 
18 months away or something like that in similar conditions. Um, is that something instead of eyeing off a bit? Um, yeah, I think about uh, the last 12 months and 18 months seems a very long way away. <laughs> so um, I'll be focusing on the Sri Lanka T20s at this stage. But um, I'm certainly looking forward to playing some one-day cricket. Um, like you said, we have, we've, we've hardly played any one-day cricket over the last sort of 12 to 18 months. So um, I think as a whole squad and a whole group, um, you know, the opportunity to play five ODIs in these conditions um, will be an awesome experience for us. Um, you know, it seems that we've got a pretty settled lineup in the white ball squads these days. So um, hopefully, you know, we can get some, um, make some good progress here and um, and move forward. I know you say like 18 months is a long way away. That, that's fair enough. But obviously the last ODI World Cup from memory, I think you got drafted in for a little bit of, didn't you? But like you weren't part of that squad. Has, has it been a motivation of yours to try and make sure you are there though in India next year? Um, oh, there's no doubt that, um, you know, with the amount of, or the, the World Cups that we've got coming up over the next period of time, um, you know, as a professional cricketer, um, as a professional sportsman there, that's what you, you strive for. That's what you want to be a part of, um, having been part of the T20 World Cup, having been a part of briefly of the um, 2015 World Cup win. Um, you know, that the, the feeling that... Um, I and, and us as a, as a group experience after those wins, um, probably that's the motivation. Um, it's not necessarily the motivation to get get my spot or keep my spot. Um, the motivation is for me to, to work hard, to um, keep trying to improve, to make sure that I'm there. If, if we're lucky enough to be in a position to win another World Cup for Australia, um, to experience that feeling again. And uh, that's the motivation for me. Thanks, mate. Mel. Thanks, Cole. Hello, Mitch. Um, no. Just, just um, as someone who went on the tour last year, um, and at the time, you know, there, there was a, a fair bit of, I guess, or not, not too much faith in in where the T Twenty team was. There was lots of rumblings about the coaching situation. Lots of players being unavailable. I'm just wondering if you can give a bit of an insight into whether or not this embarking on this tour feels a lot different, bearing in mind that you went on to win the World Cup and, and how it might feel different and for you personally? Um, yeah, I think probably when looking back to the World Cup, um, our lead up to the World Cup wasn't perfect. Um, but then once we got to the World Cup and we we sort of knew our side um, that we were going to be playing um, and probably the only real question towards the back end of the World Cup was whether it was going to be myself or Ashton Agar in the team. But apart from that, once we got to the World Cup um, and inside there, our inner sanctum, we felt so settled. Um, we felt really confident. Um, everyone was playing well at the time. So um, I guess from the outside, it might have looked different, but from the inside, we had so much confidence in ourselves. Um, and I think that sort of hopefully showed in the way we played. Um, we looked like we were enjoying ourselves and, um, and loving it. So I think moving forward to now and where we are now as a team, um, we've got a, a truckload of experience. Um, everyone is really clear on their roles. Um, so ultimately, it's just about going out there and performing on the day. And um, T20 can be unpredictable, um, but I think the lineup we've got now, our squad, um, you know, we're really settled and um, we're all just really excited to to play lots of T20 and lots of one, uh, one day cricket in the lead up to the summer in the World Cup. So um, it's going to be exciting times. And just, um, you know, obviously the, the team is a lot more settled now and, and that formula of, of four quicks as well seems to be something that will probably be settled going forward. So so just want to how how you see your role now um, within that and the various competition between all-rounders as well? Um, yeah, obviously, I, I think my, my role's um, hopefully batting three and, and chipping in with a few overs. Um, and um, luckily, Adam Zampa's not here this trip, so um, he's handed me down the fielding at short third man and short fine leg for the 20 overs, which... Um, is a big relief. Um, I normally try and get in there, but he kicks me out. So um, I'm very clear on my fielding role this tour, which is great. Um, 
I think as for the competition of the all-rounders, um, I really don't feel any competition with our all-rounders. I think um, our best team is with us all in it. And um, especially myself and Stoin, um, we've got such a great relationship, uh, great friendship that I just love playing with him. Um, I think there's always going to be room for, for us two in, in our white ball teams, which is which is great. So, um, yeah, I, I just love, love playing with him and um, there's certainly no competition there. Thanks. Last one here, folks. Rex. Nick, uh, your dad is uh, quite popular over here. If you ask guys like uh, Dinesh Chandimal and Dimut Karmaratna, they'll be saying that uh, he's the best coach uh, that they've come across in their careers. Any tips from him uh, as to how to go about things uh, in these conditions? Um, not as yet. Um, no, I just uh, normally FaceTime check in and uh, see how the boat's going, see if he's made any repairs to the boat back home. That's about as far as our chat goes, but... Um, I'm sure I'll reach out to Dad in the next few days and we can talk a little bit of cricket. Um, he's got some yeah, some great memories here. He absolutely loved his time, although it was cut short. Um, he, he loves, he's got a real soft spot for Sri Lanka and, um, and the Sri Lankan people. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, I'll, I'll chat to cricket to him at some stage. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Mitch, too. Mitch Marsh, for joining us this morning and we'll catch up with all of you guys uh, in the next couple of days. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. Cheers.